Yeah, Joe Parham has his Harry Burgess. Now, this next fellow, that handsome devil John McDonald, eventually gets around to talking about his favorite Downey's character, a fellow named Tookie Merrill. One of the little cottage industries in that part of Maine is giving directions. <laughs> I don't know what it is about tourists. They love to be told where to go. And no one is more anxious to tell a tourist where to go than a, a down easter, I can tell you that. <laughs> There's a fellow in Cherryfield, good friend of mine, his name is Tukey Merrill. Tukey owns a house right there in the center of town where Route 1, 182, and 193 all converge. You can't sneak through Cherryfield Tall without going right by his house. And if you ever have to stop and ask directions, he's ready to pounce on you. He has probably given more directions to more people, some of whom have never been seen again, but, but probably more than anyone else in down East Maine. I remember one time in particular. I'll never forget it. There was a couple from Massachusetts. Don't he love the people from Massachusetts? <laughs> he never forgot from his history books, you see, now, I'm not even going to ask if there's anyone here from Massachusetts, because I certainly wouldn't admit it either. <laughs> they try and cover it up when they're here, I know, until they open their mouth with that Boston accent. Anyway, there was a couple from Massachusetts, and Tokey, like I said, he never forgave the people from Massachusetts. Back in 1820, you know, the people from Massachusetts, the Bay Colony, they call it, the Bay State, the Commonwealth and all that, they turned around and in one big generous moment, they gave the state of Maine to the people of Maine. See, it used to be part of Massachusetts. They, little generous gesture on their part, they said, well, why don't you set up your own state? And they gave the, the land to the people of Maine. Isn't that something? <laughs> well, it seems that they've thought better of the idea because they've been buying it back a house lot at a time ever since. <laughs> I feel like I'm at a real estate convention. Anyway, <laughs> anyway Tookie never for, forgot that. So whenever he sees someone coming by with Massachusetts plates, he's ready. This couple pull up from Massachusetts, and the wife over on the passenger side, she wound a window down and yelled up onto the porch, how do I get to Bangor? Well, Tookie gave us some directions. Nice directions, too, as I recall. She wrote them down, like them careful out-of-staters always do. Wrote every one of them down so they could follow them careful. And she was all done. She, he snapped that window back up again, and they drove off. Five minutes later, the same car with the same people rolled right up in front of his house again. See, he had directed them right around in a circle. Well, when she looked around and realized what he had done, she snapped that window back down again, and I tell you, she gave him a tongue lash and almost blistered the paint on the front of his house. Never heard such language. Then she demanded an apology from Toki from doing that to her, but he refused to give it. He said, listen, dear, I just wanted to make sure you could follow directions before I wasted my time giving you directions. <laughs> He said, now that I see how clever you are, he says, I'll direct you to Bangor. <laughs> well, she didn't want to hear none of it. <laughs> of course, nowadays I live down there to Portland, but I miss Cherryfield. I tried all kinds of things, earn a living up there before I come down. I even once tried hunting. And I wanted, worse than anything else, to become a Maine hunting guide. Any hunting guides in the audience tonight? Good. <laughs> I decided I was going to become a Maine hunting guide because I had one small problem. I had never shot a gun in my life. Never owned one, never held one. And of course, you can't be a Maine hunting guide if you can't shoot a gun. So. 
I asked around and one of the neighbors told me he would uh, teach me. He said, you come over tomorrow morning and I'll teach you how to shoot a gun. Well, next morning, bright and early, I was over in his dooryard and he came out. He had a rusted out old squirrel gun, 22, pathetic looking thing, and two shells. He handed me the gun, handed me the shells, and he said, now you see them tracks at your feet? And I looked down and I said, yes. He said, them is rabbit tracks. And at the end of them is breakfast. Now go to. And I said, but I thought you were going to, he said, experienced son is the best teacher. Now get going. Well, I took the gun and I took the shells and I started off into the woods and I bet I hadn't gone a hundred yards. When I come to the side of a large oak tree and sat in right there in the bottom branch of that oak tree were five wild partridge. Just sat in there, sleeping, plump little partridge. Well, I took the first shell and I loaded it into that gun, and I aimed that gun as careful as I could, and I fired right at the base of that branch, and would you believe, base of that branch split right in two, them five partridge fell right down in between, and then by God, that branch snapped back to again and <laughs> held them partridge fast. <laughs> I was some impressed if I do say so myself. <laughs> My first shot, I sauntered over to the tree and snapped it off the, the tree there and threw it over my shoulder with the Patrick's still attached and continued off into the woods following them rabbit tracks. Well, you know, I hadn't gone another hundred yards when I come to the side of a hill and I stopped there to rest, put my branch down there, put my gun down and stand there resting. All of a sudden, I heard a roaring sound. I look up and there was a bear charging up the hill at me. And as I was looking at him, I heard a growling sound. I look up and there was a, a mountain lion charging down the hill at me. <laughs> well, I was some concerned. And I wondered which one of these two I was going to take on first, you see. Well, I decided to take the bear on first because he was closer to. Matter of fact, he was so close I didn't even have a chance to reach down and get my gun and get that load and all. I couldn't think of anything else to do. I, Stuck my hand out like that and stuck my hand right into his mouth. Well, that startled him some. <laughs> but you know that old bear just kept coming? And as that bear kept coming, of course, but now my hand starts going further and further down his throat. First into his stomach, then into his intestine. First upper and then lower. <laughs> until, by gory, my hand popped right out the other end. Well, you want to believe that startled him some. But you know that old bear just kept a-coming? Well, by now I'm getting a little concerned. He's climbing up my arm. And I couldn't think of anything else to do. I reached up and grabbed a hold of that tail and hung on for dear life. And then, for no particular reason at all, I just gave that tail one heck of a yank. Yes, sir. Would you believe I pull that bear right inside out and backwards. <laughs> well, you want to believe that startled him some? <laughs> but that old bear just kept a coming. Only cost by now it was in the opposite direction. <laughs> so I had time to turn and consider the mountain lion who all the time was charging down the hill at me. Well, the two of us Squared off, all ready to do battle, the mountain lion and me. When all of a sudden we heard a screeching sound, we look up and there was a pack of wolves closing in on the two of us. Well, do you know why Billy got that stockade built? That's right. When them wolves was on us, and inside a half an hour there ensued a battle the likes I, which I had never seen before or since, feather and fur and everything else flying all over the place, dust. Well, of course, we managed to kill most of them wolves. Them that wasn't killed limped off into the woods of bleeding. When all the dust had settled, I turned that mountain lion, he turned me, and we 
decided right then and there, whatever differences we had, they was over. <laughs> that mountain lion turned on his heels, went up the hill, I turned on my heels, went down the hill, following them rabbit tracks. <laughs> Well, you know, I hadn't gone a hundred yards when I come to the side of a stream, and I'm standing there on the side of that stream wondering which way I was going to turn. And I look across the stream, and there staring me dead in the eye were two rabid, sick-looking wild dogs, jaws snapping and foam flying and everything else. I could tell they were pretty sick. And they was about to take a chunk at me as look at me. Well, I decided I'd have to take them on next. So I loaded the last shell into that gun, and I aimed all ready to fire, and all of a sudden I heard a quacking sound, and I look up, and there was 12 wild ducks heading south. I contemplated them for a minute. But I said, nope, better take the danger on first. So I aimed again, all ready to do away with them two sick dogs, and all of a sudden I heard a honking sound. I look up, and there were 12 wild geese heading north. Of course, I was some tempted to fire at them geese, but of course I had to take the danger on first, so I aimed again. Squeezed off the last shot, and I don't mean to brag, but that bullet sped true to its mark, hit a rock, and that rock split in two, and killed both dogs. <laughs> As luck would have it, that gun blew up in my face. I told you, she was a rusted out old mess of a squirrel gun. Blew right up in my face. But there was even luck there, you see, because you know that the butt end of that gun flew south and knocked down every one of them ducks. <laughs> and the barrel end of that gun flew north and skewered every one of them geese. <laughs> But of course, I was out of the picture for the moment because the force of the explosion knocked me into the stream behind me. Tell you, it was something. Well, when I come to, do you know that my left hand was on an otter's head, my right hand was on a beaver's tail? <laughs> and when I stood up in that stream, my pockets were so full of brook trout <laughs> that a button popped off my fly and killed a rabbit. <laughs> 